How's it going, boys and girls? What have we here? That's right. We've got a new Momo steering wheel and hub for the Miata. This is the hub 5702. And this is the steering wheel. It's the Mod 07 350mm in leather, not suede. I think the leather will hold up better. So we're going to be replacing the stock steering wheel, which has seen better days. It's got this cover on it, which is not too bad, but honestly this cover gets really sticky. It's just kind of a crappy vinyl, not real leather, and um, it's just kind of nasty. And the underlying thing is uh, leather underneath here is kind of scratched up. So. Why would you want to do this? I'm not really advocating replacing your stock steering system and airbag system, um, but here are the reasons why I'm doing it. The main thing is, um, soon after buying this car, it started getting an airbag light. The code was telling me that it was a problem with the computer, which is usually not fixable um, after some research. And um, second, this is a 94 Miata, and I don't really trust the airbags in this year of car. Um, they were one of the first gen of airbags. This is the first Miata year with two airbags, passenger and driver, and they are super powerful. And there's a reason why in 1997 or 8, they changed the guidelines for airbags and made them much less powerful. And so the second gen airbags after that are actually much safer, um, assuming they don't send shrapnel into like the batch that has been coming out somewhat recently and all the recalls are for. But the main thing is, is that um, these airbags have been known to deploy. They're now 23, 24 years old. They've been known to deploy just while driving for no reason. Uh, when, the, when they do deploy, the passenger one, is angled in such a way that the your passenger may not even f get any effect from it. It basically punches straight up and breaks the windshield. Um, the other thing is I have um, uh, my son likes to ride with me, and he doesn't. He's not within the size and weight range of an airbag in general. The size and weight range of an airbag, you'd be surprised to know, is extremely narrow. It was built for a 50th percentile male, five nine and I think about 170 pounds, something like that. And if you're outside the range, either below or above, airbags may not work for you. Um, a lot of people will say, well, it's better than nothing. Well, in a lot of cases, it's, it's not. That small collisions cause airbags to go off and um, they can kill you. So um, those are so, that's some of my reasoning why I don't feel like it's a huge safety issue to take it out that it's actually a safety issue to leave them in and so what I'm doing is replacing it with this aftermarket steering wheel and hub the thing about the Momo hub is that it is um, pretty much the only hub that is uh, has a crush type construction and so what that means is most of the hubs that you see out there are like these solid aluminum blocks and they they look all milled and pretty and stuff like that and and yeah they they, they look really nice but um, that's not going to do you much good if your head is headed towards your steering wheel now all cars are meant to have a collapsible steering column so that means if you are in an impact in which the engine and the steering column is being pushed up towards the passenger compartment, it will collapse and hopefully not impale you. But that doesn't mean anything about the steering wheel. If you don't have an airbag, uh, then basically your head is now leaning forwards towards the steering wheel and you're gonna, and you could impact that. You want something that's gonna, by design, crush and bend. So this will take the force so it doesn't leave you with a concussion on your, you know, in, in, in such an accident. Now the other thing is um, most Miatas 
or any car that's built with airbags are meant from a um, safety belt perspective to go forward a little farther that they go um, they basically are meant to start slowing you down and then but keep going a little bit farther so that the airbag will take the rest of the impact you don't want that in the car where you're just going to be going forward you want it to pretty much start stopping you immediately so if you have um, the stock belts in your car there is a potential change you may want to make at the bottom of the stock belt there's an extra loop of material and stitching and um, you can remove that stitching very carefully without doing anything uh, else to the belt the it's just the stitching if you nick the belt it's done throw it away uh, just get a new belt but if you can get the stitching out without nicking it you can take that loop out and that, that's that's a breakaway loop um, which is what gives the belt the extra space to go forward and you you don't want that you want it, without an airbag you don't want to go forward any more than you have to so you want it to be tight now these are aftermarket belts my belts were fraying and it was horrible so i wanted to replace it these are dot approved aftermarket belts i decided to go with a belt that would give me you know i went with a different color just a little offset to the to the beige interior darker kind of chocolate brown and then i went with these kind of airplane style clips which are kind of cool i like them they're a little bit more annoying to deal with but because um, you got to clip them and then tighten them sort of like you would you know in an airplane seat so this this might need to be modified as well oh yeah so pretty comes with the horn button there genuine leather nice very lightweight All right, so the first step in doing all this is to disconnect your rear battery cable. Uh, and the reason we wanna do that, obviously, is because you're working with the airbag. If you still have airbags in the car, you wanna take it out, com take out the electricity component completely. Um, there is a, a fuse in the fuse box. It's clearly labeled airbag, but if there's anything that's still electrified in the car, you know, I don't want to deal with it. The, the, the proper procedure is disconnect the battery completely. And actually, the second part of the procedure is to disconnect the airbag physically from the control unit and all electricity, which is done by some simple clips underneath the steering column on this side and behind the glove box on that side. We'll get to that. All right. So now you don't want to start immediately the proper procedure is to let this sit for about 10 minutes at least what i like to do also is uh, pump the brake a couple times there may be some residual energy in there but mainly the 10 minutes is because the airbag computer which is underneath the steering column has a capacitor and the capacitor is going to retain that charge for a fair amount of time that's its purpose and so you need to let that be able to discharge so that's what we're going to do is wait 10 minutes okay the next step is to um, take out the four uh, little 10 millimeter bolts that are uh, nuts uh, that are on the back here of the steering wheel and that's going to release this um, so that's what the, the bolts look like and what we're going to do is this should just come right out and there's a little tether right here uh, that we have to remove uh, and it's just hooked on there. So what we'll do is just take this. There, fine. All right. And then we're going to be removing that as a 21 millimeter uh, nut, I believe, for the steering column. So this looks in delightful condition, pretty rusty. And the first thing is to disconnect the airbag cable uh, which is the, always blue and orange in the Miata so we'll take that out and then we'll be able to get this thing out of here all right and safely out of there the orange is to the horn you can see the wire going to the horn button and uh, the blue is for um, 
the airbag itself, and here we are. It is a live grenade. So we'll put this aside. You should always store these things facing upwards so that if anything actually happened, um, that it would dissipate all the force would be upwards and it would push down into whatever it's sitting on. It wouldn't really bounce around the room. All right, so next you're gonna turn your wheel and lock it and then get yourself a nice breaker bar and uh, take that off. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, it's supposed to be only torqued to about 30, 35 pounds. So with a breaker bar, it should come off relatively easily. And then the next step is we're going to unthread it most of the way so that we have a little space. And then we're then the idea is to sort of knock it, knock it back and forth um, until it releases. So you kind of have to go on both sides, kind of from the back, in a little alternating pattern. And, and yeah, a little bit of knocking back and forth and it'll eventually give up. And the reason we leave a couple threads on here is so that it doesn't accidentally pull off and smack ourselves in the nose. Um, so then we can take this off. And we'll put this down here. And we can move that out. Alright. We'll put this to the side. Alright. So this is the clock spring. And on these Momo hubs, they are a little bit difficult to install but I'm just gonna try something and we'll see how that goes actually what we should do is unlock the wheel and put it back to straight straight up and down I'll put the wheel back on it doesn't need to be bolted on it just needs to be on these splines and then we will um, get it back to straight and that way we can start from from scratch I want to get some good shots of this uh, assembly since it seems like it's hard to find on the internet like what this actually looks like if you can see through this little window right here you can see the little ribbon connector of the clock sc spring itself and that's where this connects to it's got this um, uh, relief this little bracket is basically just a stress reliever so that it's not pulling all the time on it and uh, there's three wires in there matches up to the three wires here the orange is the horn and the two ones on the blue side are the are the one that's two of them right there that's for the airbag and so we'll be clipping this off we don't need this this um, whole plug anymore and we're just going to be and we don't need the blue wires which is actually red and green once we expose it from this this thing and all we need I mean red and white I think there's a this will be green like a green orange green red something like that that's what we'll have now to recenter the wheel, the instructions are actually right here. You turn it clockwise to lock, then you back off exactly two and three quarter turns. That's back to dead center. Um, once you do that, you can then take off your hub assembly or wheel, whichever kind of makes sense, I guess the whole hub assembly. You want this to be pointing straight up at the end. Um, and uh, then you can put it right back on and that should be centered without any kind of fussing okay so let's take a look at our hub assembly here um, as you can see there's two indentations already drilled in here and that's for the two um, turn signal cancellation tabs and uh, so that's going to fit right in there and there's a little marking that says top which is not in the middle which makes it a little bit annoying but the arrow points up and it lines up um, with the top the thing about this is that the sub was actually made for a different Mazda and they never really updated it. Um, as you can see, these wires are in line 180 degrees with the turn signal cab. This is at a different angle. So when we put this on here, obviously that big old bracket's not going to let us mount this. So what we're going to do is we're basically just going to, a lot of people go through all this hassle of drilling out your brand new hub, modifying your clock spring, all kinds of crap. I'm going to modify the clock spring, but I'm going to do it the easiest way possible. 
what I'm going to do is just break this off such that the, the ribbon cable is still connected in the back and we'll be able to flatten it down and we'll take off as much as possible. As you can see, there's a little bit of space here. There's about a quarter inch of space. So that should be enough to run the wire to the side this much and then out through the thing so we don't have to modify anything. So we'll try that. So mine, as I tried to break this off, it started cracking a little bit too far in. I didn't want to break at the bottom of this plastic. Um, so what I'm going to do is just dremel off the edges and then that should make it uh, come off and then I can see where the wires are and I can just cut the rest of it off and it shouldn't be a big deal and that should be able to lie flush at that point. I went ahead and took out the three screws on the bottom uh, that secure uh, the, the outer surround for the column here so I could just see it better and get better angle um, with my Dremel. So, we'll see. Ah, the mysterious clock spring. Okay, so uh, I cut off the outer connector which looks like this and basically this just slides on here and once I took a little tension off of it it just slid right off um, and I cut around the base so normally people just cut this part off and leave this intact with the little rivets um, but what I plan on doing is smashing this down a little bit so that it can um, just be flattened and then hopefully everything will slide on So yeah, um, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. The little plug thing was just not working. Um, you couldn't really bend it around correctly. And the side was tearing a little bit. And I just felt like it wasn't going to um, hold. So I decided to just solder it. So it's not that big a deal. Um, yeah, these wires are kind of small. Basically, if you look at the, if you look at that, um, little ribbon if it'll focus um, make sure it's focused it uh, uh, it's got three flat wires and the middle one is where the green one was going to which is the horn and all I did was kind of melt off the, the plastic coating that was on the bottom and did a kind of ugly solder luckily it's got this little backing behind it um, which is kind of useful it protects it from heating up the rest of the uh, the plastic or anything like that when, when you got the soldering iron on there but I just kind of put the wire it's a braided wire so it just goes like kind of around it and under and on top of it and uh, got me a little solder connection bent it up so that it would be in basically the right place this is where the hub is going to sit and um, yeah I mean so it's relatively stable and it works <laughs> So that's all we need. Uh, so mission accomplished. Didn't have to modify this. Just small modification on this. Um, people might debate whether you should just cut a notch out of here and just rotate this or something like that to line this up more. You still you still have to hog out some area within here. It's not super. Uh, it's not going to fit completely. So there would be, still be a fair amount of drilling that you have to do onto this, which I don't really want to mess with a safety item. You know, I, I don't want to compromise the, uh, you know, some people say it's no big deal, but you know what? This is no big deal. Just, you know, break it off, solder. Worst comes to worst, I can replace this whole thing with a um, junkyard version for about 25 bucks. So no big deal. Um, so gonna go with that and we'll see what it looks like when it's bolted on all right let's see how this horn button works okay so I got a little electrical tape over here this really doesn't have to be a, a ton just so that it's not gonna short out accidentally against the bottom of the, the hub but and then I got a little spade connector that I had laying around to connect to this because this wire wasn't quite long enough to do what I needed it to do so basically what's happening is the hub goes on here, the uh, wire is going to go through the little hole on the side, and then it's going to connect to the horn button. Um, this goes basically in between right here, this little ring, and this is what is actually going to physically hold the horn button. It's going to 
pop into it. So when you assemble this, you got to make sure that all this stuff is, you know, looped through and everything like that. Otherwise, um, but you can do this at the end mostly. So this is going to go through and connect to your um, positive. And so uh, that's this one on this particular horn button. Then this is your ground. And it's got, and I made this little connector. It didn't come with it for some reason, but because there's so many different ways that a steering wheel um, horn button will connect. So they didn't provide everything, I guess. You have to kind of come up with how it is for yours. Um, but uh, this is just going to connect to this little tab right here, which is, of course, bolted right here, actually like that. And it's going to, that's going to ground it out. Because obviously this is connected here, this is connected to the steering uh, column, and as we saw, that produces the, the noise. So when you push the button, it should ground out. Alright, just got back from a drive. Looks like everything's lined up. Um, didn't have to take it off. I only torqued this down partially, uh, not all the way, and I only torqued these... Uh, um, hex screws down just lightly. I hear they can strip kind of easily so I didn't I don't think they need incredible torquing. Um, so anyway now it's time to uh, get that uh, horn button in there and tape this off so we wouldn't have any loud noises while turning the wheel um, and then we can take this guy and hook her right in that looks sweet. Okay, so got that got that torque down. And it's supposed to be 30, 30, 31 foot pounds, something like that. What I did is I slid this in just a little bit um, so that it's all the way around. Um, there's a little ring in there that provides some springiness. And at this point, you can still kind of turn it. So what I want to do is just line it up exactly. And once it's there, then I can just push it home. Because the best way to get this out is not to pry it out, but to take the whole, take the wheel off and push it out from the back. Okay, that looks good. I don't want my We'll move to be off center. There we go. <laughs> nice. Man, I like this button actually. Uh, this is different than the one that was in the pictures actually that on the website where I bought this thing from. And um, I bought it from Amazon, but it was a reseller on Amazon, so you know those guys come and go. But um, same price pretty much everywhere from authorized dealers but uh, this one looks nice a little black and silver that's sweet it goes perfectly with kind of whatever everything else that's going on in here I'm trying to go with silver I may co coat this with this is not an interior video but I may coat this with um, not coat but wrap it with the same uh, vinyl that the dashboard is wrapped with or uh, the side panels is wrapped um, so, that is it. There's your Momo install with no modifications to the Momo Hub. Zero. Zip. Works just fine without it. Got the little rubberized thing that looks nice. It looks like the side. The clearance is about perfect. Haven't screwed this in actually. Um, with three screws on the bottom and that is it this one's got a dish so it's got enough space one of the things I was concerned about with the different ones like the Protipo or I think that's right is that there's very little space it was like this much space and you'd be hitting your uh, hitting your fingertips against the turn signal and the windshield wipers and all kinds of stupid things so I didn't want that um, but anyway and this makes it a little bit closer I think the 350 millimeter seems perfect and um, seems like grips well, good size, awesome. Oh yeah, outro. Um, 
One thing I didn't mention was uh, the airbag light defeat. Uh, it's very simple and um, there's a little bit more, if you do it my way, um, there's a little bit more soldering that you have to do because you have to connect, well, technically not. What you can do is the harness underneath the steering column has those two type of same plugs. They are um, uh, the blue and the orange. And what you do is between um, the positive line, the, the red one wire, uh, you need to connect a three ohm quarter watt resistor. And if you don't have a three ohm, you can make a three ohm or a 3.3 ohm by using the more common 10 ohm, three of them, and just twist them together in parallel, solder those in line um, in between the harness and the rest, and you'll be all set. Um, that will turn off the airbag light. In my case, airbag computer doesn't work. That's coming out as well. I just haven't done it. Um, maybe that'll be a future video. It's really not too big a deal. It's just mostly kind of annoying to reach. You probably need to take out the seat so that you can access under there easier. Um, it might have been a little bit easier without the steering wheel on the car, actually. But uh, either way, um, it's coming out. Therefore, the light's going to stop. So um, it won't do that thing. If you're in a jurisdiction where you um, they look at the airbag light when they turn on the key during inspection, then that might be a problem because it needs to light up um, even though there's not one physically there. I don't know. You'll have to deal with that. In my jurisdiction, they don't care about airbags. It's not an inspection item. So I don't have to worry about all that. It can blink. It can do whatever it needs to do. Um, you can take out the light out of the uh, console, um, the gauge cluster. That's another option. Just take it out and no more blinking. But I might as well just take out the, the whole computer. Um, so that should do it. Once that's done, we'll wrap it up. All right. Thanks for watching.